Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Serratore. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Serratore is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, and including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Today, we're going to be continuing our conversation about dreams And this one in particular is going to be about sort of the darker aspects of that. Things like nightmares, sleep paralysis, different negative beings and entities that we may encounter in these dream time spaces. And I will be sharing um, a pretty cool, I think it's cool anyway, a story of how I had zombie dreams for 20 plus years. And it was happening on average once a week sometimes more than that, but on average, I'd say about once a week. And there was two specific kind of zombie dreams I'd have, and I couldn't figure it out. So this is going to be an interesting story to share, and I'll tell you about um, how Bonnie was able to clear that up. So it's really, I think, a fascinating um, story that will really illustrate to you the different influences that affect us in our real life and, and how to actually make the changes to you know get rid of those negative influences so uh, bonnie how are you today i'm good thank you cynthia yeah this is an exciting one. one yeah definitely yeah, i is. mean the first part was also a really fun one uh, and very enlightening for many people so today we're going to be talking about the darker part of it and so this is going to help a lot of people i feel because i know a lot of people experience a lot of these things and they don't really have the answers Mm -hmm. Um, And I found a lot of the answers from you. So let's just get into it. So last time we talked about astral travel and how we could um, have these different types of experiences. We go into these different time spaces, these different dimensions. We might interact with particular beings and such. And a lot of that happens to benefit us in our actual daily life. But there are also darker realms that we might enter into and these could be maybe actually the cause of nightmares right so could you talk about maybe nightmares generally and if that part is true about how we actually are going into like darker realms astrally and that could be one of the reasons why we have nightmares yeah I mean there's multiple reasons why we have nightmares I mean one one of the more common ones would be you know we get we're troubled about something you know the subconscious is presenting just kind of demonstrate that we're traumatized, troubled, bothered, or something. But when we're dealing with these kinds of of interferences, like from the powers of darkness, um, we've got, you know, there's other other energies as well, like the dark lords, and we've got, you know, demonic energies and minions, servants, all kinds of different, different beings that are in those realms we call the powers of darkness or dark powers. And Oftentimes when someone is being either attacked or they're, they're in their sleep state and you know, they, they're feeling something's interfering or they become afraid, the odds are pretty good that they really are being attacked. And usually people that are being attacked, it's happening because at some point in their life, in their incarnations, they did open the door to utilize the powers of darkness. Okay for personal gain, little things that people may not think much about, like hexes and charms or using voodoo or witchcraft or sorcery or black magic, things like that. You know, you're, you're opening up gateways, you're opening up portals, you're opening up energy frequencies to utilize those energies for, you know, for whatever you're wanting to do. And the thing is, is once you open that door and you decide you don't want to use it anymore, you're thinking, okay, I'm done, got what I needed you're not released, okay? So sometimes people are literally haunted, okay? And sometimes people, the energies are within them, they're in the energy field, they're interfering, they're blocking people. So sometimes in in the dream state, we're actually feeling and sensing some of the beings that are after us or that are interfering with us or attacking us or basically just wanting to make our lives more, uncomfortable, more miserable and suffering, because that's, that's actually what does happen. If you got deeply involved in any kind of ritual stuff, like any kind of satanic rituals, and, 
you know, say you did sacrifices or even blood sacrifices, human sacrifice, maybe whatever, soul capturing, soul devouring, soul annihilation, you are not just let off the hook, okay? Because <laughs> then you have all these beings that you've caused harm to, and and you can have other people that are their family members or people that loved them and cared about them, and and they could be attacking you as well. Okay, so it isn't just like dark force energies, but you know, if you've opened these doors and you've done any kind of torturing of other people or done anything that I've already labeled you're not free and you will have enemies and you will have people that want to cause you harm that want to torture you make you suffer punish you so those can all be presenting in your dreams you know sometimes you might find yourself trying to run or or feeling terror while you're running or you know just feeling unsafe and, and trying to hide and and then, or even like being trying, you know, like being in quicksand. I mean, these are all things that are, that people have dreams about, that they can't get away from, seemingly can't get away from. And sometimes I'll wake up, uh, like when something's really intense happening, but basically, you know, we're dealing with, I mean, this is real. These are real spirits, real souls, be, be, beings that were human. Not either, well, not all of them are human, but mostly we're dealing with human beings, you know? and who are no, no longer in, in body. So they're on the, the spirit realms and in the astral planes and other time space dimensions. And, you know, so when you're dreaming and you're in that vulnerable place, you know, that's just when a lot of things will start happening that will, you know, try to undermine you, cause, cause suffering. So there's, a, I mean, it's just a multitude of reasons why causes and, and what you're dealing with and, you know, what we really want is to be able to be liberated from these kinds of attacks. And there are ways to do that. Um, but for those, you know, that we're dealing with, it's important to understand that you really are dealing with discarnates. You know what I mean? It isn't just like, oh, I just dreamt this and I saw a demon chasing me or someone was chasing me or whatever. And I was terrified. I can feel like I was afraid for my life or my well-being or whatever. It, you know, the odds are really probably like 99% that it really was, uh, you know, something chasing you, something after you, something want, wants to cause harm, as opposed to, you know, something in your subconscious where you're, you know, you got something running that's causing those kinds of feelings, like you're trying to get away from something or someone. So, you know, I think it's important that people understand, yeah, there's real things happening on these astral planes and on the, in our dream states. So, Bonnie, I know you talked about the different types of beings that could be doing this to us. You talked about what are called, you call them victims. So, um, just to give people a little bit more context, if Bonnie has been, was talking about in past lives, if you've done some really dark stuff, some of your victims from those lifetimes could actually follow you um, in, into your uh, current lifetimes and in however many future lifetimes and actually basically hurt you they that's their intention so I actually had um, a session with Rosaria one of your accelerators and I was I was experiencing some sleep paralysis attacks that was still going on and so I asked her about it and it's really fun I Rosaria I really like her and she is very talented at what she does and she immediately tracked it to a past life I had where I was like a really dark um it sounded like I was a general or something, which I was not surprised about because a lot of my past lives are wartime kind of soldier type of people. And I know I know I also also have quite a lot of past lives where I did really dark things. I like I I just know that. You know, a lot of issues I have in this lifetime, I felt there was really no real explanation for it. And then when I find out about all these things from you, it's like, oh, that makes a ton of sense. It really put the pieces together for me. Right. And you know, so with Rosario, she tracked it back to this past life where I was really dark. Um, like I guess I would call it a, like a warlord type person in charge of a lot of people in in like army type setting. And I actually uh, decided, I think in that lifetime, to go to the light. <laughs> uh huh. And then, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I changed my yeah. mind. <laughs> and she said. Um, that there were certain people that I knew who didn't want that. They, mm -hmm. they were just, and they were actually people. They weren't like the beings that I might have had contracts with. 
right. the like dark force beings that I had contracts with. It was like people who I knew who mm -hmm. basically were, um, they, they didn't want me to leave my position. And so right. they followed me to future lifetimes and they were actually attacking me in sleep paralysis. There was like four of them. Mm -hmm. And she, she actually, you know, communicated with them and released, you know, me from that. And um, I think accelerated them or something. I don't, I don't really know what she did, but she mm -hmm. took care of that situation. And it was really amazing uh, yeah. to see that. She did that in like one session. You know? And that's mm -hmm. some of the, I'm, I'm explaining this because it goes into the next topic, which is sleep paralysis. And I also wanted to mm -hmm. illustrate the different concepts that Bonnie just talked about and shared with you from my personal experience. I, I have experienced all of that stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I know um, that there are certain past lives that I have, which, you know, I'm not proud about, um, but, you know, I'm suffering the consequences of those mm -hmm. and I'm working on cleaning that up yeah. so that I can move forward and, you know, be, be a better person basically. And, you know, just change things, change my life around. So how about we talk now about, oh, well, I like to get into the topic of sleep paralysis because mm -hmm. that's something that, I know a lot of people experience and mm -hmm. I know that people may not believe it's actual negative entities. They might just mm -hmm. think it's like, I don't know, their, their body, like their biology or something, mm -hmm. something's happening. Mm -hmm. But right, right. could you yeah. talk about it from your perspective? What sleep paralysis is? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I used to have that and uh, it actually started back in 1977. Yeah. But basically, like with sleep paralysis, what, what happens is there is someone, uh, you know, attacking. There is someone interfering. There is someone on the astral planes and other time-space dimensions that are literally attacking us, attacking me, attacking you, okay? Um, different reasons why. Sometimes they haven't found you for a while and then they find you, meaning like, you know, if people are tracking you in past lives and maybe you're you don't start having sleep paralysis till you're in your 30s or 40s or whatever sometimes it just means they it just took a while for the those beings to find you okay but basically what's happening is they are in your energy field and they are wanting to cause harm okay and what's happening is <clears throat> when when they when they're there most of sometimes you're in that kind of like almost like a lucid dreaming kind of state where you almost feel like you're awake, but you're not really awake. You know what I mean? So there's, there's often that kind. Sometimes you're like deeply asleep and then you're dealing with them at that level. Um, but oftentimes it's more like when you start to try, when you're coming back, when you're waking up and you're trying to pull out of that sleep paralysis and you're, you know, you can feel fear. You can sometimes feel the presence of something or someone else. And you know, you're just kind of trapped and, and stuck in this frozen place. Okay. So partly what's happening is the, on the subconscious level, the body is feeling threatened. Okay. Cause you are. And so the, the body goes into that frozen state where you can't move. And it's also uh, the, the beings that are also there can be doing different things to trap you, to capture you, to hold you, which can also contribute to that feeling like you can't move. Okay? I remember when it first started happening to me, um, I had had gone in for a major surgery and then it started happening. Um, so at first, you know, I, I coming, coming, becoming aware, trying to pull out of it and then just being feeling this whole frozen feeling and feeling and sensing, you know, these energies all around me and feeling really unsafe. So back then, I didn't really know this. I didn't know what I know now, but back then I just came to just start calling Jesus. So I did. So I just started saying just over and over, just calling Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then pretty soon that grip let go, the beans left. And then I was able to, to wake up. So it was in 2002, I believe that I found it, it all ended. So I just want to share that because it's important. Um, so all these years, I'd be having that, and all, all the time, I'd be, just be calling Jesus, okay? And with this time, the guy, the demon was, I mean, it was so friggin', it was like major, it was like being awake, okay? The demon was stalking me, okay? He had red eyes, he's looking at me, and I could, at first, I was feeling the fear again, like I would normally feel, 
And then something in me just went, wait a second, wait a second, I'm done with this. I'm done with this because I've already been dealing with demons and that kind of thing. Um, but I didn't know to the extent of what they could do or how they interfere, whatever. So what I did was, it was like, I turned around and started and faced this demon. Then I started chasing that demon. Like, you, we're done here. You know what I mean? Like, this, this is done. You know more. Game over. You know, and I just like flew at this thing and he just took off. And, and to this day, this was in 2002, never again have I ever had that experience at all. So it happens to a lot of people. And a lot of people think it's like what Cynthia was saying, you know, that there's just something going on or whatever, you're, you know, something unconscious, whatever. But usually in that sleep paralysis, you really are being attacked, okay? And here's the thing. Here's the thing about demons. Here's the thing about dark force energies. When you have fear, game over, they win, okay? When you're no longer afraid, you stand up to them, they just, it's like you, you can make them go away. You can end it because they're just these beings that, that feed off your fear. And if you're not afraid, you're not having fear, there's nothing to feed off of. They're not empowered. They're disempowered. Okay. So this has to do with demons on all levels. You know, you got stuff attacking you even in your wakeful state. It's like, face it, you know, let them know you're done. Let them know you're not allowing it. Game over. So with um, you know, in the dream state, when we're when we're having those energies come into us, if you have the wherewithal, like maybe at first you might feel afraid, but sometimes if you start anchoring it in, like if you, when you go to bed at night, you just say, "Hey, if something shows up, I'm showing up." Okay, I'm showing up to protect myself. So you're kind of setting the ground, you know, for the for the experience. And what happens is, is now the thing the being presents. At first, you might feel a little fear, but then it's like, wait a second. No, I know these things are more afraid of me if I turn and face them. Okay. So you do that. You turn around, you face them and blast them out. Let them know, get out of here. Show your power, show your strength, be that big energy that you are. And, and it, it works like it's just, it's amazing because it's like they just leave. They leave and don't come back. It's pretty cool. So I, have, I have several questions from this, Bonnie, because you know, I've had so much experiences with being attacked by dark forces and sleep paralysis specifically also. And I noticed that when I'm really tired, because you're when you're in a sleep paralysis, you're in different levels. Sometimes it's you're much deeper mm -hmm. level of, I guess you could on the sleep spectrum. So you're just not fully conscious and you, you right. sense yeah. these things happen and you're being attacked, but you don't really have the awareness to think of to do that and that has happened to mm -hmm. me so many times where i'm just not there like i'm not fully there present and mm -hmm. i'm super tired mm -hmm. and so i don't think oh i have to fight back it's just it, part of me was thinking oh not again okay mm -hmm. i wake up something <laughs> that would that was my default because i was okay. just so tired i couldn't really think of what to do or mm -hmm. even though I've heard you talk about this before and this it did also some of a lot of this was before I met I found your work you know mm -hmm. I heard other people talk about things too if you're fear if you're afraid etc then they attack and I've had those experiences too where I was able to fight back and win and then mm -hmm. other times it would happen again where I wasn't able to mm -hmm. and sometimes it just really happened it it depends on in that moment, do I remember these teachings? Do I remember, mm -hmm. right? And then also sometimes I'm just way too tired mm -hmm. and my default is just wake up, Cynthia, because it's easier. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I wake up and I'm super drained. Like, because right. yeah. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to be sleeping to get getting my energy back, but it's actually like the opposite. And so I end mm -hmm. up getting up. So for situations like this, where people are maybe are experiencing where they aren't really afraid, they do stand up to these things, but sometimes mm -hmm. it occurs where it's just, maybe you feel a little defeated, I guess, because it happens again and again and again. And, mm -hmm. and maybe you don't, I guess in a way, if they're still attacking you, there still is fear deep down there is or fear. maybe, maybe some yeah. other type of thing. So could you talk maybe about that? Like what would, what could people do really if those situations were happening that way? Yeah. So, 
I mean, with you, you know, you, you went to the default of just waking yourself up. But here's the thing. You had the wherewithal to even remember to do that or think to do that. What I'm saying is you can start anchoring it in that. Yeah, I can. I can. If I if I'm being attacked or I'm being afraid, I can face it. OK, you, you it's like anything when we have that intention, like you're going to, you know, write down your dreams. OK, you have the intention of writing down dreams So in the middle of the night. You're dreaming have something and you wait, you know, you have that wherewithal and you do it. So I would just keep anchoring in that you have that ability, you know, to when you're feeling afraid to make sure you turn around and face whatever it is that you're seeming because part of the fear is happening because you don't know what it is. Okay. But you can feel, you can feel the intensity, you can feel the energy frequencies. And then of course that makes us afraid. And by ang keep, keep just, you know, when you go to bed, yep, I'm going to make sure I turn around and face it. Um, Again, other things too, like like that, like with you, like being really fatigued and tired, and you're vul more vulnerable when you're fatigued and tired. Okay, um, and and also it, people that don't have don't have that you know remembering to turn around and face it, then you do what you do. Meaning, like for me, I did. I I just started saying Jesus, and that absolutely worked. Okay, also um, even just waking yourself up. You know what I mean? Like you feel your you know, that paralysis and nothing's hat. You're just having fear and you just want to come out of it. And you just like, like you do, like intentionally just wake up, wake up, wake up. You know what I mean? So you're not going to stop these things until you stop them. Meaning either you're going to stop them or you get, get some clearings that also brings it to an end. Like you did, you know, you got a session with Rosario. So people can get sessions and clean this stuff up because you are being attacked. Okay, that's the bottom line. We can clean that stuff up so that ends, comes to an end, so you're no longer being attacked. That would be one of the easiest ways, clean it up, game over. You know, never, not, no more haunting, no more attacking, it's over. And for those who aren't, are, you know, they want to try these other ways, then, then I would say go for it. Because no matter what, you know, you don't want to have fear of any kind of uh, energy anyway, of other, any kind of being. Even if they're demons, you don't want to have fear, you know, because they're they're still they're still beings, and at the very core, they still got that light. So, you know, it's like if you can face them, but otherwise, if you can't, get clearings or wake yourself up, call in Jesus, whatever works for you, you know, just do it to make your life more pleasant rather than traumatized. So that brings up another question, Bonnie, when you talked about the Jesus thing, because I used to do that. I'd call Jesus, Mother Mary. I'd call in Archangel Michael. And they would help, especially at the beginning. And then after a while, they stopped helping. And, mm -hmm. and then I asked Sarah about this. And by the way, people who don't know, Sarah Ellingworth is the lead accelerator on Bonnie's team. She teaches Intuitive You, and she'll be teaching foundations coming up. So I took intuitive view with her. I actually brought this up about being attacked by dark forces and, and things like that. And she actually tuned into it. I didn't expect her to. I just, I just told her about my experience about calling in these beings to help. She actually tuned into the situation, me specifically. And she said, they didn't help after a while because you were supposed to figure out how to do it yourself. And then yeah. I'm like, they yeah. didn't teach me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Supposed to teach me? <laughs> yeah yeah but no i get it i totally understand and that mm -hmm. falls in line with what you're telling telling us which is you know you could get that clearings you could get the help too but then it went and also clearings generally because i noticed that when i was doing my healing work even before i found your work i would become stronger in these scenarios just from doing my emotional healing work mm -hmm. you know, feeling mm -hmm. things like yeah. anger and, and depression i told you about how i I had depression mm -hmm. and when I'm in those dark states those emotional dark states I'm much more vulnerable and everybody would be as well to these dark forces so as I got stronger within generally and had more light within you know it was much easier to then mm -hmm. actually be able to fight them off and I was able to you know like I told you in very it, it kind of depended on my whether or not I was actually tired or not um, mm -hmm. and then of course Rosario helped me which was awesome so I did all that. I mean, I, I did the clearings. I, I got help in that way. And I also did my own inner work as well. And all that really helped to shift, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything really, and especially yeah. this. Yeah. Um, 
you did talk also about the different beings and you talk most about demons, but one thing I experienced, especially early on was I experienced negative ETs in my mm -hmm. dreams and in the sleep paralysis state, I encountered mm -hmm. a few reptilian, I think they were, and grace, reptilians and grace. So are those that does that happen a lot also with people in dreams and nightmares and maybe sleep paralysis too, is those types of beings and shadow people. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the shadow I beings. Yeah. Them as well. yeah, the shadow beings, those are intense. Yeah. Yeah. So even ETs, the grays. I mean, I have people that I've worked with since way back that have been abducted and you know, they have nightmares and, and memories and that type of thing. Um Usually with things like the greys or some of the other ETs that, that do abductions, it's not quite the same. Um, I mean, yes, you're in a sleep state and there's a different, because there's a different frequency. When you think about a demon, okay, there's a different energy. They're intense, they're negative, they're dark, they're intent wanting to cause harm. A lot like the greys and the other ETs, they don't have all this emotional energy, so to speak. There's more of a neutrality, meaning, think about our scientists, okay? And, and right here in planet Earth, scientists, okay? You know, they're, they're scientists. They, they, they could, you know, do things to little critters, little, little mice or monkeys or whatever. And there's nothing, they don't, there's no feeling, you know what I mean? It's just scientific research. It's the same for these other, for these ETs. They're just, you know, it's all about scientific research, exploration, whatever. So they're not having that desire of wanting to cause you harm or to scare you. That's, that isn't the, the, the energy behind it. Like with the demons, that is it. They want to mess with you. They want you to be afraid, okay? So we're dealing with ETs, and it isn't about that. So you're not going to generally have those same kinds of experiences, you know, when you are being uh, connected with these types of ETs, um, if, even if you are being taken up, I mean, there might be some fear, but it's not going to, you know, it's not the same as you're, when you're dealing with these other, other energies or even enemies who want to cause you harm. Okay. Think about it. You know, people or beings are attacking. They want to hurt you intentionally. Okay. The ETs, it's not about that. You're just a, you're a little mice in a, you know, research lab kind of deal. So it's, it's different, okay? And then of course, when, when you've got carry or, or people coming from past lives, when you've done things and people are believing, even, you know, you could even not have, you could have done something that was unintentional, you caused harm, whatever, and other people could be all upset about it, angry, revengeful, and then they just keep tracking you, okay? Even though you, maybe you didn't, what you did wasn't really like a horrendous atrocity or intentionally causing harm, that can still be happening. Remember, you're dealing with humans. People get really upset. They take things personal and they want revenge, <laughs> retribution. They want to hurt you. If they got hurt or you hurt somebody in their, their family. Okay, so you're, you're still dealing with that at that human level. Um, but when you're dealing with like the ETs, for me, my experience has been, you know, when, I, when we find things, usually we, like implants, you can take them out and let it be done. And but sometimes like the ones that are, that are taking people for, uh, that are continually re, uh, doing research on particular people, you know, just because you don't want that to happen doesn't mean it'll stop. You know what I mean? It's like, it's on some level, there's some kind of soul agreement, but on another level, you know, you, it's again, it's that place where you have to, it's like the desire within to take charge of your life, to take charge of what's happening to you so that when you are, you know, finding yourself in those situations, you're still holding this energy that says, no more, you know, no more. This is my body. You have no permission. I'm not giving you permission. Okay. So we're dealing with all kinds of different things from time, space, dimensions, universe, galaxies, all over. And you know, wherever we've been, we could be, you know, dealing with other discarnates that are into our energy field. So there's lots and lots and lots of reasons, causes why, you know, people are, you know, wanting to make us afraid or stop us or block us or inhibit us in some way, keep us in suffering. So just to let everybody know that we'll be doing some special episodes for Halloween. We'll, we'll be getting more deeply into these different beings and we'll be talking more specifically about like what exactly are demons and what exactly, who are exactly the shadow people, these types of things. So if you have more questions about some of these different beings that we talked about in today's episode, definitely stay tuned for some of those later 
episodes for Halloween. And we're going to go deeper into that. Um, Bonnie, I do want to share my zombie dream story because I think it's really fun. And mm -hmm. I think it's one of the best ways to kind of end this episode in particular and a two-part series. So I I don't know how much you know about it, Bunny, but I, I know I told you this several times where you were the one who cleaned up my zombie dreams. And I had zombie dreams for so long and they were very vivid. So I guess I'll describe like the two different types of zombie dreams I have. And I think it'll help people. I think it'll help people to see what those dreams were really telling me deep within by noticing the different two. So is it okay if I share this, Bonnie? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it'll be fun. So I had zombie dreams where um, one in particular was, it was always very similar to each other. There would be zombies out in the world, um, like you would see in any zombie TV show. It'd be kind of like similar, like a post-apocalyptic world. And it would be me, sometimes I'll be by myself or with other people. And these dreams actually, Bonnie, were not ever scary. These dreams were just, they were actually kind of fun dreams. They were light, somewhat lighthearted, but it were very vivid. Like the zombies were always very detailed. <laughs> it was very somewhat, um, I wouldn't really say the scenery was bright, but it was, it, it wasn't very scary. Like I wouldn't call these nightmares, but um, in, in these dreams, I would always just easily kill the zombies. It would be no problem, but um, they would happen all the time. And uh, these are weird. This is interesting. Some of them would actually be kind of funny. You know, so th those were those types of zombie dreams I would have. And then I would have another kind. And this was very interesting. So these were zombie dreams where there were never any zombies in them. That might seem strange to hear, <laughs> but they were, it's kind of like the same um, concept of, or same scenario or environment where it's like a post-apocalyptic world. I would either be with myself or maybe a group of survivors. And I would never encounter a zombie, but we all knew that there were zombies. Mm -hmm. And any moment we felt we were in danger, we were there was a threat. Any it, we turn this corner, there's going to be a horde of zombies. Or if we leave this home or this base, there's going to be zombies. And so we would never see. I would never see zombies mm -hmm. ever. But there was always that looming threat. And the and the way that these dreams appeared, it would always be darker. Like the actual sceneries would be very dark. Sometimes I couldn't even really see, like visually, I would just sense, you know, what was happening. Mm -hmm. And and it would just always feel like dread, gloom, doom, like there's something that's gonna happen. And I realized once I had enough of these dreams which I had them all the time both both kinds and very very different from each other like one was fun and there were zombies in them <laughs> and then the other one was there were no zombies but it was a zombie world and those were the scary dreams those were what the the what I would call the nightmares that I would have that illustrated several things to me that I had deep within which was like things like fear of the unknown or when a th when there's a threat that I don't see, then there's that, I, that brings fear within me. But when I there's a threat that I do see, I'm able to overcome it. Right, those two things. And I've had scenarios in my lifetime where, I, you know, I've, I've almost died, and I had to act so fast without even thinking, and I just knew what to do. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of those dreams and the zombie ones that where they were actually in my dreams, and I would just know what to do. I knew how to survive. But when they weren't in, when I didn't see them, those dreams, it was always just, it, it was weird. It felt dark. There was something about it felt really dark. Like it, it was, I knew also, part of me knew that this was a darker force. This was, there was something there. Cause when I would have these different attacks in different ways, it would feel exactly the same way. So about a year ago, Bonnie, this was when I first started working for you. Um, you do your live Q&As every month. Everybody go check out live Q&As with Bonnie. She does them once a month on YouTube for free. You can ask her any questions during that time. So during one of them about a year ago, I just type in, I typed into the chat. Oh, I have zombie dreams all the time. And you read that 
And it wasn't a question. I didn't expect you to look into it, but you actually tuned in. And within seconds, you said, oh, this is demonic energy in your subconscious. You better clean that up or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And so you tuned into it so fast. And when you told me that, I knew it was true because of all my experiences with dark forces and demonic encounters I've had. So I actually listened to your dark force interference one and two. And for people who don't know, these are group clearings that Bonnie did several years ago. You could still buy them. They're very powerful. I listened to those two, dark force interference one and two, back to back. I called your presence in with me and I told you your presence. I told Bonnie earlier today, you told me, (laughs) <laughs> that I have demonic energy causing my zombie dreams. Please yeah. clear it during this clearing. And I'm, I'm being specific because I know people have listened to Bonnie's clearings before. And a lot of people don't seem to really know how to get the best from them. And I'm hoping this example will help people. Like if you know a very specific thing, if you learned it from maybe you did ask Bonnie and she told you some stuff or maybe an accelerator tuned in and found some stuff, go find those clearings, call in Bonnie and ask it's very specific. Let that, let Bonnie's presence know very specifically what you want and what you happen to know about the issue. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like that was, I, I don't have zombie dreams anymore, Bonnie. And it wasn't a personal session with you. It right. was the group clearings. I knew exactly though what I was targeting. I knew exactly what the issue was and that was enough to get rid of the zombie dreams that I've had for 20 plus years mm-hmm. you know once a week and it was so, a recording do you, yeah video. do you want to talk about that Bonnie you want to talk about <laughs> some of the things I might have you know touched upon in this story yeah I mean when we're talking about getting the you know the videos utilizing the videos they really do work you know the key though people is you have to call me in you want my presence there. And again, what Cynthia said, be specific. Okay, you know, there's something happening. Tell me, tell that aspect of me that's right there. Then I can unravel it. Okay. But basically, you know, the, the clearings, the videos, uh, they do work really well. And uh, you can utilize them as much as you need or want, which is really cool. Um, And, you know, you're dealing with, again, you know, people are always afraid of these demon energies. And I'm telling you, sometimes they're, you know, once you get enter, once you get big or turn around and face them, they just like wimps, you know, run and hide. So I think that's a good thing for people to know. Because again, remember, it's that fear that keeps, keeps you afraid. And then it makes these things get bigger, stronger, make faces at you, all kinds of stuff. But um, (laughs) it's kind of funny. Um, you know, seeing demon get all growling at you and it's like, what, you know, and then they just leave. So it's a trip. But yeah, I mean, you know, we all, the, the dream time, our sleep time, those are major times of our lives and lots is happening. But if we're you know, being haunted in any way, we can clean it up. There is help, lots of help. And sometimes, you know, again, see, a, see somebody who works at that level, like my accelerators or myself, or get a video, pay attention to the, uh, play the video. And like with Cynthia, you know, she, like she said, 20 some odd years of that same dream, it's over, over. So again, the videos really do work. I didn't think anything could stop the zombie dreams before that. And mm-hmm. I've actually gotten help from other <laughs> psychics <laughs> before. Mm-hmm. And they didn't, they weren't able to like, know what the issue was and you found it in like a few seconds honestly if people if you want to watch that live q a it was about a year ago check out some of the live q a's on the youtube channel spiritual acceleration youtube channel if you want to see that um, it's right there and where bonnie tunes in to me my subconscious and finds the demonic energy in there but one thing that just came up bonnie i remember you said this i think it might have been in a group clearing or something But you said that if you have demonic energy in your subconscious, you always will feel fear. And in that zombie dream that I told you about where there was no zombies ever, but there was just that looming dread. Mm -hmm. It, it, that's that, is that the fear you're talking about? Like that just kind of where in a way it feels like there's no, no answer to 
what it right. is. It's yeah, yeah that, that dread feeling like you know something's happening. You don't know what it is, but you know it's not good. Yeah, I mean we're just we're we're you know we're attuned. Our bodies are attuned. Where when we have traumas or troubles or we're afraid, we're going to feel it. You know, we're going to be aware and have have trepidation or have like dread or whatever. That's always a red flag. There's something in your energy field that doesn't belong there, wanting to cause you harm. All right, great. Thank you so much for this conversation, Bonnie. I had a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people got a lot out of this because we just shared so much um, great information and also solutions because that's what we're about here at Spiritual Acceleration. What are your issues? How could we help you? And I think that many people will have... Um, the will have related to what I shared today and what you shared today and just want people to know once again that there are solutions and um, please look at spiritualacceleration.com check out all the group clearings there's private sessions and those are very powerful like um, I could tell you I listened to the dark force interference one and two for a lot of things and it cleared up a lot but there were still certain things I need to help with like the sleep paralysis specific to I mean I, I have different beings attacking me and um, you were able to clear up some of those in the group clearing too, Bonnie, mm -hmm. there's specific beings. Right. And then, um, but I need a Rosario for helping me with the mm -hmm. other ones. So yeah. there yeah. are, I just want people to know there are solutions and we have yep. a lot of different services that can help the different levels of whatever mm -hmm. your issues are. Yep. So definitely check out spiritualacceleration.com. If you have any questions about any of those things, we care at spiritualacceleration.com is also the email you want to you want to email us for that. Um, all this will be in the description below, so don't worry about it. Um, you can just click the links down below, and it'll take you there. But thank you once again for listening, everybody. Thank you, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're watching thank this you. on YouTube, like the video, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what kind of sleep paralysis or nightmares have you had, and let us know what you think about this episode and what you may want to hear uh, us talk about in the future. And if you're listening to this on Apple, leave us a review. That'll be really awesome. Thank you, everybody. Bye.